We return to Nellie whirling a can in a horizontal circle overhead. She's pulling inward and a little bit upward on the string. The upward part is to balance the downward force of gravity on the can. Very small. The inward part is centripetal force, a pull toward the center. Clearly there's no outward pull on the can. Let's look inside the can and assume motion is perfectly horizontal. A pet bug inside the can is also whirled in a circular path. There's clearly a centripetal force on her. This centripetal force, the bottom of the can pressing on her feet, provides a normal force on her. To her, it is a real force, as real as the force due to gravity. I'm neglecting the small downward force of gravity on her and considering only horizontal forces here. From our stationary frame of reference, we watch the whirling can very closely and see no outward force on the can and no outward force on the bug. Any forces on the can and the bug are inward directed forces, what we learned previously. But what if we view all this from the bug's frame of reference inside the whirling can? The physics is quite different in a rotating frame of reference. From the bug's point of view, there's an outward force pressing her against the bottom of the can, as real to her as gravity. She calls this outward force a centrifugal force. It obeys the same equation as centripetal force. Its magnitude in newtons is the same as the magnitude of the centripetal force. Whereas centripetal force is center-seeking, centrifugal force is center-fleeing, or away from the center. If you were to find yourself in a rotating frame of reference, like the bug, centrifugal force would be as real to you as the force of gravity. However, there's a fundamental difference. Gravitational force is an interaction between one mass and another. The gravity we experience is part of our interaction with Earth. As such, it obeys Newton's third law. We pull on Earth, Earth pulls on us. We have discussed this before, ye yum stuff. But with centrifugal force in a rotating frame of reference, Newton's third law doesn't hold. The bug feels itself being pulled outward, but there's nothing doing the pulling. Bug is pulled outward by what? What does bug pull back on? Nothing. There is no something causing the pulling. No pulling counterpart exists. To better understand this important point, let's return to examples of previous lessons. When you push on a wall, the wall pushes back on you. This pair of equal and opposite forces illustrates Newton's third law. Remember that you can't push on the wall unless the wall pushes back equally hard on you. When the fist of a boxer hits the bag, the bag hits back on the fist. Again, a reaction force, an impressive one. And when the boxer hits the tissue paper, a tiny force. And if no tissue paper to interact with, then no force. The point is that a force can only exist when there's an action-reaction counterpart. No counterpart, no force. The centrifugal force in the bug has no counterpart. Nothing's pulling back. Therefore, physicists call centrifugal force an apparent force, a fictitious force, not a real force like gravity, electric forces, or nuclear forces. Yet, to the bug in the whirling can, it is real enough. Consider a colony of bugs living inside a bicycle tire, a balloon tire with plenty of space inside. If we drop the tire from an airplane high in the sky, the bugs will be in a weightless condition. We show two of these bugs here. Now spin the tire and the bugs will feel themselves pressed to the outer part of the tire's interior. They won't feel like they're falling anymore. They will feel simulated gravity. To the bugs, the direction down would be radially outward. Think about that. Here we see part of a giant balloon tire in space. It's a rotating habitat, something you'll likely see in coming years. 
Inside is Phil Physiker. The floor presses against Phil's feet, the purple action force vector. Phil's feet press against the floor, the purple reaction vector. This pair of forces is real to us and to Phil. But from Phil's point of view inside the rotating system, there's another force. That's right. He experiences a centrifugal force, as challenging to him doing push-ups as gravity back on Earth. I hope you saw the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, that was popular many years ago. A rotating space habitat was featured, and occupants behaved as if they were under the influence of Earth gravity. That's because the spin rate was just right to provide a centrifugal force equal to mg for each occupant. Simulated gravity. Amazing. I want to leave you with a question. First, we live at a time before the advent of rotating habitats in space. Inhabitants of today's satellites are in a continual state of weightlessness, which eventually creates problems for the human body. Suppose a satellite is attached by a strong cable to a massive boulder, perhaps an asteroid. With both satellite and boulder revolving about the center of mass of the satellite boulder system. My question. How much centripetal or centrifugal acceleration should the satellite have to provide occupants with Earth normal weight? Defend your answer. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.